Now that we have a trial that presents boxes for our Simon Effect experiment, we can start thinking about how to collect information about responses. In presentation, you can use a variety of response devices. For this tutorial, and for the Simon Effect experiment, we only need a button device. As the name implies, a button device is in most cases a device where the response is a button being pushed, such as the keyboard or mouse. However, in general, any response method that results in discrete events can be treated as a button device. For example, specific words from the speech recognition feature may be treated as buttons. As far as your scenario is concerned, those devices are all essentially interchangeable. You set up which buttons will be used in the experiment settings in the response panel of the settings tab, but the scenario itself does not need to know anything about the buttons. This means that if you move to a computer that has a different response device or plug in a new response device, you need only change the experiment settings and not the scenario. For our experiment, we want participants to use their left and right hands for responding, so we will use keyboard's keys that are on the left and right. To set this up, we go to the response panel of the settings tab. We can set up the experiment to have a default set of buttons, or we can apply these button choices only to this particular scenario. What you want to do will depend on how many scenarios you want to have as part of a single experiment, and on how many different button configurations you need for the separate scenarios. In any case, you can right-click on a specific scenario listed to copy the current button configuration for this scenario to the default, or to copy the default to this scenario. We will set up our buttons for just this scenario for now. The devices that presentation is aware of will be listed in the devices area. We want to use the keyboard so we choose that device. When we do so, a list of possible buttons for the keyboard appears in the buttons list. We will choose F for our left button and J for the right. You can double click on a button or click the use button. Now the two buttons appear in the active buttons list. We can test them by clicking the test button and then pressing the F and J keys. When we press other keys, nothing happens. Note that when using the keyboard as a button device, it is treated as a big button box. In particular, the caps lock or shift key states do not impact the responses. You can even use caps lock or shift keys as response buttons. With the buttons set up on the response panel, if we run our current scenario, we will see an error message. When using button responses in a scenario, you must define the active button's header parameter to be the number of buttons the scenario is expecting. This ensures that the experiment settings match up to the scenario. Now we can run the scenario without problem. As we continue with this tutorial, to see the effects of what we are doing, we can set the analyzer window to always open after a run. If we run again, we can press some buttons and then see the information that the analyzer shows about the buttons after the run. For now, we see the time and button number for each button, but there is no information about accuracy or response times at the moment. The first thing we may want to do in our experiment is to make our trial duration response dependent. That is to say, we want to show the box on screen until a button is pressed. To do this, we will modify two trial properties called trial type and trial duration. You can read more about the different trial types on the trial timing page of the documentation. Setting this property to first response in SDL will cause the trial to end immediately when either of our two buttons are pressed. Since we don't want the trial to end until a button is pressed, we can set the trial duration property to the special value of forever. We can run this to see that now button presses end each trial. If we update the time for the stimulus to allow for a longer fixation cross, we will highlight a possible problem with the current setup. We will also add a code to the fixation event so we can see that in the analyzer after the run as well. Now, if you run this and press a button while the fixation cross is being shown, you will see that the next trial starts without showing the stimulus event. To avoid this problem, we will modify another trial property in combination with presentation's response matching features. We can use these features to have presentation match responses to stimuli for us and then classify them appropriately. If a stimulus event is available to be matched to a response, we say that the stimulus event is response active. 
More details of these features will be introduced in a later lesson. For now, we will just make our main stimulus event response active by defining the response active property to be true. By default, stimulus events are not response active, so the event for the fixation picture will not be response active. Next, we will set the all responses trial property, which can limit which responses affect trial behavior and response statistics. If all responses is true, the default value, any response will affect the trial. If all responses is false, only responses that occur while stimuli are response active will affect the trial. Therefore, setting this to false will prevent responses during the fixation from ending the trial. Finally, we need to define a header parameter to control what type of response matching behavior we want to use. In almost all cases, you will want to use simple matching for this parameter. Unfortunately, because of backward compatibility, this is not the default value. Although forgetting to define this parameter can sometimes be an annoyance, it may make you happier to know that presentation takes backward compatibility very seriously, which over time can be a big benefit. Now that we can run the scenario again and see that the trials no longer end before the box is displayed. However, note that information about early responses still appears in the data in case you still want to know about such occurrences. The response logging header parameter may be used if you want to completely ignore such responses. We also note that two other stimulus event properties, stimulus time in and stimulus time out, can be used to more precisely control when a stimulus event becomes response active, if you don't want that to happen as soon as the stimulus is presented. See the documentation for more details about these properties.